This was interesting. So in the future, uh, this is their tactics for taking out the, I don't know, the robots that sort of stand up on their treads. The Johnny Five walkers, yeah. The Johnny Five, enormous killer robot Johnny Fives. There's Roland. So intimidating, so scary. So scary. Grenade, grenade out. Perfect throw. She throws. Done. Good throw. But dead. So great throw. He hits the treads. I'm not sure how replicable that is because <laughs> it's hard to hit stuff like that in a chaotic environment. Also, are their tactics good? Like I'm looking at this right here. They're running out in the open. These are warm-blooded mm -hmm. creatures. They're just glowing in IR. That's right. I guess, do we know that the robots can see in infrared? I think later in the movie they mentioned that they can see in IR. But wouldn't they want to see in everything? Like, yeah, right. Humans are constrained to visual light, right? Light the optical spectrum, yeah. The optical spectrum. And if we're well-equipped, we can get night vision. So that's some IR frequencies. But a robot would be like, can I, can I get all of it? I want <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? <laughs> Just install want... another module of whatever sensors you can. In fact, you can make install yeah. modules for every type of sensor possible. Just anything. Anything. So that's talking sound at intensities and frequencies that the human can't hear. Just all mm -hmm. of them. Both both in higher frequency and lower frequency. Just right, to the everything. point where you're like, you're like listening for seismic activity, which is another vibration. Heck, heck, you could even listen for like where are the rodents and then where are they not. If they're not there, then maybe uh, humans are there. That's right, because they're eating them all. Right. That's right. You could do a smell, lots of smells, like hone in on human feces and urine. I mean, yeah. If it's like, like humans oh, produce sense and then and then if robots are like, oh, yeah, that's a human right there. Like, yeah. Stink. Right. They look for the stank and then they mm. listen for the vibrations and the sound mm. and the speaking. And then they also look for IR signatures and radio. I mean, definitely if they're doing radio communication here. They could definitely sense that. Mm. Um, yeah. So given that information, are these tactics good? I mean, gosh, it's the best you got. You got to get in mm -hmm. close to throw these these grenades. Mm -hmm. Uh, onto the tracks of the Johnny Five Walkers. So I guess the best thing you can do is sneak around. Right, um, so I guess the, the Johnny Five Walker can't see them, but they did show this uh, this thing. Ooh, these flying guys. And, I mean, it's going to see you. And it's not like a human and a flying guy who has to, like, focus on different things. They just do a widespread sensor sweep and look at all the different IR signals, send that out to the Johnny Five units. He knows where everything is. How, how could yeah. the human stand a chance? I guess, I guess, gosh, given those constraints that if I'm ever out in the open, like this flying guy is going to be like, oh, the glowing thing, that's a human. That's a human. The best thing that I could do is make like, you know, those like, like balsa wood airplanes, like you throw them and they glide pretty far. Oh, Attach yeah, a yeah. bomb to that. Yeah. And like, cause then it's room temperature. <laughs> it's whatever. So you're like, you're like gliding bombs <laughs> down, like, like, like down from a football stadium, hoping that'll hit. I guess that's, you know, that's these little tiny little tiny bombs and you just send in this fleet of balsa pew, 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 wood. Balsa wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so scary. I'm still not seeing how they got one Johnny Five and the robots are cranking them out. Robots are cranking them out and it takes, you know, sixteen or so years to get a person functional for war. And if you push it maybe ten? But they're not going to yeah. be really De -de Depending on their roles, yeah. Yeah, because they're not going to get a leadership until later in life. And I mean, and if you roll them out too early, they'll make a mistake and then 10 years lost. Like, That's difficult. Right. I, don't, I just. Whew. And then would the. Would the, the robots hovercraft. miss? Yeah. So I see what the human's missing. So all this vibration to deal with. Bouncing around. Like, can't, you can't aim it. It just doesn't have yeah. the control. But the robot flying thing is just, it knows its orientation. It knows exactly what's going on. It knows exactly where it is. It has microsecond probably reflexes. It would just be locked in, right? Yeah, why isn't it not just dialed in and it's all ding, 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 shoot the right person ding. at the right timing because it has all right. the processing power and it can control. Like it doesn't have to deal with the ground exactly as you said. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, 
gosh. I mean, this is this is quite a miss because they have their reflexes are just incredibly fast. So if the movements of the, I mean, I imagine if it's like computers today, the movements of the craft are on the order of seconds. And yeah. this thing's sub millisecond calculations. Yeah, calculations. How could it be meters off? Oh boy. Uh, gosh. So I guess I guess maybe let's attack this question from the human perspective. Mm -hmm. So for humans, it's a good thing that we make mistakes. Like it's it's somehow nature likes it. Like like I mm -hmm. I think of this in terms of basketball players. Like in principle, a basketball player should have a hundred percent free throw rating. Like sure, when you're younger, like you're mm -hmm. figuring it out, but eventually. You just dial in your body mechanics and you do the same shot every time. It should be perfect, right? But humans mm -hmm. don't do that. Um, you, you miss. And, and it's something about like it's advantageous for people to have slight variations and stuff. Because when you make mistakes, sometimes you learn something new and it gets better. So maybe we've programmed something like this into the robots where they have like okay. like hyper precision, but then also some some variation modulator that masks the entire calculation so they can do random stuff sometimes i don't know i'm filling in blanks maybe maybe there's some big advantage to making mistakes because it is weird that like we have this basketball player he's the best three-point shooter ever from the same just from what 10 meters away from a basketball mm -hmm. hoop it's really not that far mm -hmm. he can make it 50 percent of the time like how terrible is it? it's just such a terrible hit rate i, I it's, mean it's, it's great compared to other humans but it's Still fifty percent. Like it's Only not 50%. like dialed in like a machine, right? And he's been practicing this his whole life. Why can't right. he just be like boop every time? Boop boop boop. Close my eyes. Boop boop boop. So, is there an advantage to being that inaccurate all the time? And then we put it into the robots, so that's why they're missing. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I, gosh, I don't know why. I mean, I would just ma I would just make a robot that hits. Right, especially if it's wartime. It's like okay, this is mistake time. Dial in mistakes. And this is like kill time, no mistakes. No mistakes. Just hit him, kill him. Get the shot. Right. We don't need to be yeah. missing by like two or three meters here. This is the guy. So weird. This is the shot. May oh gosh, maybe it's to make them scared so that they run home. But then, but then they kill him. But they already got the vector. That's right. They want to go. I mean, I I can imagine missing on purpose because if I'm trying to get someone to lead me to their base. Mm -hmm. But then they do shoot them and they do kill them. So then what was the point of missing earlier? That's right. And if you wanted to follow them to the base, you get a high altitude flying guy to just IR right. sensor the, the the engine. You got the engine and the two people inside. You just right. follow them without shooting them. You just you just go high enough such that the humans can't hear your engines anymore. That's right. And it's all there's fog and dust and smoke everywhere, so you can't see them. Yeah. They don't even notice. Yeah, weird. Which I don't know why you, the robots yeah. miss. Yeah, I, I don't have an explanation. Yeah, weird. Scary, though. Super scary.